Okay, so good morning everybody. I'm Federico Monti, and today I will talk about the geometric deep learning on graphs and manifolds using mixture model CNNs. This is a joint work with uh, Davide Boscaini, Jonathan Masci, Emanuele Rodola, Jan Svoboda, and Michael Bronstein. In the last years, uh, deep learning techniques such as convolutional neural networks and recurrent neural networks uh, led uh, a real revolution in the machine learning community. Probably the most successful example comes directly from computer vision, where convolutional neural networks, where we, we all know, allow to achieve performance in uh, image classification and object detection tasks that we could only imagine even few years ago. The success of deep learning techniques, uh, and in particular of convolutional neural networks, uh, has mainly come so far from signals defined on Euclidean domains, namely on grids. However, in a multitude of different fields, one may have to deal with social networks, regulatory networks, or, for instance, 3D shapes, namely with data that can be represented at best, not recurring to Euclidean domains, but rather to graphs and manifolds, and in particular, to signals defined on these domains. Typical problems that one may want to solve on these domains are represented by vertex classification problems, where, for instance, provided a social network, we may want to identify if a particular person would have to vote for one candidate or another, or, for instance, by graph classification problems, where, for example, provided some set of manifolds, we may want to identify which shape they are actually representing. So, looking at these examples, and knowing the performance that we achieved with the convolutional neural networks on similar tasks defined on Euclidean domains, one may naturally wonder if we can actually apply CNNs also to graphs and manifold structured data. Well, unfortunately, while convolution appears as a well-defined operation on Euclidean domains, on graphs and manifolds, things are not that easy. Different vertices in a graph may indeed show even really different neighborhoods one from each other, which may change for the number of vertices and for the connectivity they present. This makes it impossible to apply convolution as we would usually do on Euclidean domains. Therefore, in order to extend such an operation to these particular domains and so generalize CNNs also to graph and manifold structured data, we need to resort to some particular kind of construction. The first family of solution one can think of in this case for generalizing convolution is represented by spectral approaches. Here, the main idea is basically to generalize the Fourier convolution theorem also to graph and manifold structured data, thus realizing convolution not in the, sp in the spatial domain, but rather in the spectral one. So in few words, observing that the complex exponential corresponds with the eigenfunction of the Laplace operator in Euclidean domains, people started to consider in previous works the eigenfunctions of the graph Laplacian as a generalized version of the typical Fourier basis. Exploiting such a top function, one can either realize a graph convolution just projecting a provided signal over the eigenfunctions of the graph Laplacian, thus realizing a graph Fourier transform, then multiplying the obtained spectrum for some set of spectral coefficients, and finally projecting everything back to the original domain. This intuition, which has been exploited by many different authors in the last years, has led really good results for signals defined over one graph. However, despite this nice performance, this kind of construction suffers an underlying drawback. Namely, graph Laplacian eigenfunctions are inconsistent across different domains. So if we take, for instance, two different manifolds, and we define the same exact signal on corresponding vertices, if we then try to realize convolution exploiting the same set of spectral coefficients, well, this is the result that we obtain. As we can see, even if we use the same input signal and the same coefficients, the final result is really different from one case to the other. This directly comes from the different behavior that graph Laplacian eigenfunctions show across different domains, which indeed change in a non-regular way from one case to the other, thus changing the behavior of our graph Fourier transform and so necessarily the behavior of our graph convolution. In order to extend convolution in a consistent way across domains, we need therefore to resort to a second family of approaches, namely to special approaches. Here, the main idea is basically to apply a template on some neighborhood representation which is obtained mapping the neighbors on some finite fixed structure 
Actually, this is also a media that, that there is behind convolution when applied over images. When uh, our neighborhood representation is just represented by a possible patch that we can extract around a given point, and the template is just represented by the filter that we want to apply. Actually, this is also the media that, that is behind our approach, which indeed can be categorized as a special solution. So in few words, we assumed in our work that the relationship between nodes is described by some set of coordinates u. These coordinates can be, for instance, the geodesic distance and the angle with respect to a direction of maximum curvature on shapes, or the degree of neighboring nodes on graphs. Define this set of coordinates, we then introduce the notion of a learnable patch operator. We define for this a set of kernels in the space defined by coordinates u, and for each kernel, we extracted the average value of all the neighbors that were falling in the same region of space. Vectorizing this set of average values and then multiplying each of them for some particular coefficients, we finally realized our generalized convolution. A key point of our construction is represented by the way in which we treated the different kernels. Indeed, the position and shape of the kernels was not fixed, but rather it was uh, learned at training time together with the values of the filters. This provided flexibility to our network, giving the possibility to our CNN to directly learn from the data, which was a good configuration of the patch operator to apply in order to produce good performance at training time. So just to summarize, as you can see, everything is quite simple in the end. We take one point, we extract the neighbors, we map the neighbors in some Euclidean space, we apply some kernels in this space, and basically we aggregate the information of points which are more or less similar one to each other, because they have uh, more or less similar coordinates. So it's really easy. In the end, convolution is just realized by means of a matrix multiplication. However, despite this simplicity, this kind of, um, we observed that this kind of construction was able to produce really good results on a variety of, of, different, of different tasks. In particular, the first problem that we decided to face with our approach that we named Monet, Mixture Modern Neural Network, um, is represented by a graph classification problem. So probably this is a, a toy example for today's standard, but still it's good for showing uh, the capabilities of, uh, uh, of, of an approach on a well-known task. So in this case, we decided to represent the various images of the MNIST datasets as signals defined over graphs. In particular, each image is represented on a graph which is different from one image to the other. We, in order to compute the graph, we just applied superpixel at first over the provided image, and then we connected two superpixel if this were showing a sufficiently small Euclidean distance. Uh, in, in, uh, in our final construction, basically a superpixel corresponds to a vertex, and the signal that we have is just the average K-level signal that we can extract from each superpixel. Our goal is always the same. We just want to classify each image here defined as a signal defined over a graph with respect to a digit that it is representing. So exploiting in this case the Euclidean distance and the angle with respect to the x-axis as coordinates for, the, for defining the relationship between different nodes, these are the results that we obtain with our approach. As we can see, while Chebnet, which is one of the spectral approaches I previously presented, shows an increasingly dropping performance with respect to the variability of the graphs that we generated, which is naturally inversely proportional to the number of superpixels considered, uh, our approach is able instead to produce, uh, in every case, an accuracy larger than 90%, showing in this way a much more robust behavior with respect to Chebnet. The second problem that we decided to face besides this graph classification problem is represented by a semi-supervised vertex classification task. So we took in this case the famous score and PubMed dataset, which are represented by two citation networks where vertices are papers and edges are citations among them. And uh, we decide to classify each paper, namely each vertex, with respect to the topic it belongs to. Cora is represented by 2,700 documents with seven different topics, and PubMed by 19K different documents with three different topics. Since this was actually a semi-supervised learning task, we decided to take just 20 samples per class as a label set, while all the others as unlabeled. Exploiting in this case the degree of the nodes uh, for defining the relationship between different vertices, these are the results that we obtain with our approach. As we can see, our approach uh, is able to produce uh, an 81.65% of accuracy over Cora and 78.81 over PAMED, outperforming all the other competitors that we consider in our comparison. 
last but not least, we decided to deal with manifolds. So we took the famous Faust dataset, which contains 100 high-resolution meshes of 10 different people placed in 10 different poses, and we decided to uh, solve a shape correspondence problem. So basically, given two points on two different shapes, we wanted to identify if these were in correspondence or not, namely if these were representing the same location. We used the first eight subjects as training set and the remaining as test set. In this case, the shape correspondence problem has been casted as a vertex classification task. So basically, for each vertex in a shape, we predicted its position on a reference one, and we considered our prediction as correct if this was showing a geodesic distance smaller than a given threshold. Exploiting this evaluation framework for training the network and uh, the geodesic distance and the angle with, uh, with respect to the direction of maximum curvature as coordinates, we obtain the following results, here presented by the red curve. As we can see, our approach consistently outperforms all the other approaches that have been previously presented in the literature, achieving a 90% of accuracy with zero error. Our correspondences are actually that good that can replicate a provided pattern defined over a shape, here presented on the left, on several other different shapes, presenting different people placed in different poses. At the same time, thanks to the flexibility of our patch operator, which is able to adapt itself to the data that we have, our approach is also able to deal with rain scans, which is something I really want to stress, for the incompleteness and noiseness of the information is an incredibly difficult and complicated task. So, in conclusion, we presented a new special approach capable of dealing with both manifolds and graphs. Our approach generalizes across domains, and it outperforms several different alternatives on graph classification, vertex classification, and shape correspondence tasks. Thank you very much for your attention, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask and come to our poster.